I was one of those kids that loved reading. I'm talking Hatchet, My Teacher is an Alien, Goosebumps, all of that good stuff. I was one of the countless kids growing up who explored the limits of our own imaginations by devouring whatever books we could get our hands on. We had zero perception of how the book industry operated, but we happily consumed their products anyways. This is what makes growing up so weird. You have to reconcile how the things you loved got made. There's something so pure about the reading experiences of young adults, so... When someone like James Patterson operates his entire business model around marketing largely towards that exact demographic, he also creates entire generations of readers like me that have had their passions for reading fueled by memories of Witch and Wizard or the Maximum Ride series. As of 2021, James Patterson ranks as one of the highest paid authors in the world. He's released over 150 full-length novels and has multiple screen adaptations in development at any given time. He's even won a National Medal of Arts and Humanities for his effort towards promoting literacy. I can't even remember a time where James Patterson didn't have his name listed all over a bookstore like he was a NASCAR sponsor. This likely stems from the fact that practically every other week he's released either a novella, another women's murder club book, or one of his many, many young reader titles. His influence is undeniable, but there's one thing that you might not realize about James Patterson. He doesn't actually write his own books. Unlike film and television where a story passes through the hands of a writer, a director, actors, and an editor, books remain a singular entity. Aside from editor and publisher notes, an author controls their tales with near totality. When you pick up an Octavia Butler story or a John Le Carre thriller, those are exactly what you're getting. First-hand, unpasteurized novels. James Patterson, on the other hand, has essentially managed to have his cake and eat it too through a series of collaborations, a word that in Patterson's case comes with a thick set of air quotes. In order to understand Patterson as a figure, it's helpful to look at how he got to this point. James Patterson graduated summa cum laude with an English degree from Vanderbilt. In 1971, he took a job as a junior copywriter at J. Walter Thompson, an ad agency that, among other things, introduced America to Rice Krispies, Miracle Whip, and the Oscar Mayer Wiener. This is where Patterson would work for the next 25 years, slowly rising through the ranks until he became CEO. By day, he was developing content like the Toys R Us kid commercial. By night, he was shopping novels like the Thomas Berryman number and Season of the Machete around to whatever publisher would take them. The big break would come with the release of 1993's Along Came a Spider, the first book in the long, long, long-running Alex Cross series. With the success of that novel came a near annual release of the next entry. At the same time, Patterson discovered the key to his future success, collaboration. To hear it from Peter DeJong, co-writer of 1996's Miracle on the 17th Green, Eventually he had more ideas than he could, uh, than he could write himself. And where did Patterson and DeJong meet? At J. Walter Thompson where DeJong was filling Patterson's old shoes as a copywriter. When you take a look at the people Patterson has entrusted with the bulk of his literary output, you start to notice that many of them have a history in advertising. From DeJong on the Travis McKinley series, to Marshall Karp, former creative director at McCann Erickson, who co-authored six NYPD Red books, to 32-time collaborator Maxine Petro, who quite literally wrote the book on working in advertising. There's a good chance you've never heard of these collaborators, which seems odd when they're so clearly credited as co-writers. Aside from the Alex Cross and Maximum Ride titles, Patterson has found himself much more in line with the role of a producer or a Hollywood studio executive than a full-time author. Since quitting his advertising job in 2006, he has dedicated himself to building upon the brand that is James Patterson. Just take a look at how his J. Walter Thompson days play into the marketing for his publications. The most terrifying threat there is, is the one you don't see coming. The one that's invisible. Hey, I'm James Patterson. In private Vegas, everybody plays games. Con games, winning games, losing games, naughty games. Every game in the book. This book. Arr, I'm James Patterson. If your kids are readers, they'll love treasure hunters. And if they're not, this is the book to get them hooked. Yeah, it's that good. Treasure Hunters. Like I said before, 
Collaboration is the key to unlocking the secrets of success that Patterson has enjoyed for the last several decades. There's even lists you can find online ranking who the best Patterson co-author is. This operation has only grown further with expansions into young adult franchises and media adaptations. In the man's own words, he'll have around 30 stories in active development at any given time, all published under the James Patterson umbrella. It's also only fair to mention that this level of authorship credit has shifted slightly in recent memory. In late December of 2020, Patterson announced that with future NYPD Red installments, Marshall Karp will be writing the books by himself. So maybe there's a future where Patterson's co-authors are given more authority to pivot their respective stories in their own directions. At the very least, it might prove to be a change from James Patterson's NYPD Red. NYPD Red 2 by James Patterson. 3, 4, Red Alert by James Patterson and NYPD Red Mystery. When it comes down to it though, is it right to turn book writing into a branded factory process? Is it fair to be creating the vast majority of your literary output through little more than detailed outlines? Well, here's the thing. It works. When Patterson accepted the National Medal in 2019, he was awarded not for any deep creative merits, but instead for works that have been enjoyed by millions. I was one of those millions. Rainy Afternoons at Summer Camp with the latest Daniel X book. Sick Days Made a Little Better with the Adventures of Maximum Ride to Turn To. We as adults might turn our noses up at someone who's overcredited for the work of others, but when a kid getting into reading sees the words by James Patterson in a bookstore, that's one more reader out there. That's the complicated thing. Will that young reader who grew up on your stories become disillusioned with the industry when they learn the truth? I'd be lying if I said I hold the same opinion of the man that I did when I first started reading him. There's no easy solution to this, since an argument could very well be made that the books would reach fewer hands if Patterson made his name that much smaller. That's what it comes down to, really. Marketability and creativity in a stalemate. Because while Patterson's total authorship will forever be questionable, his success is a fact.